Welcome back to my channel. I'm, I know I say I'm always excited to like give you guys another video, but no, really, I, every time I come out with a video is with an intention of speaking to myself when I was at a point in my life that I needed someone, something, some guidance to get me out of the freaking funk I was in. So, I'm always excited because that's my intent. It's like wherever you're at, I'm trying to meet you there and trying to get you from where you're currently at to where you know you should be at. So with that being said, just like what the title is providing is how to start believing in yourself and stop thinking that you're not enough. This was huge for me because I came from a family that didn't really celebrate any accomplishments, small or big, the way that I expected them to celebrate it. So whenever I would do something in my life as I got older, I didn't really see it like enough. It was never enough. I got an A, okay, but in chemistry I got a B. So it was always like playing that mind that mind game in your in, in my mind. So this video, I'm going to talk about what actually helped me start believing more in myself and start believing that what I'm doing is enough. Because we can run a dangerous cycle where everything that we do and we're seeing it as not enough will put us in a very sticky situation in our minds and within ourselves. Thus, full circle, will not help you manifest the life that you truly desire. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. One of the things that helped me dramatically is putting myself in different groups in the sense of not being so much at home, not hanging out with my normal friends, but seeking out different groups. I started joining Toastmasters. I joined this leadership group in my job. Um, if your job offers that, join it. I started going to conferences that I was interested in and started meeting other women interested in growing mentally and what ended up happening is I started deleting a lot of the following that I had on social media and started following now these new groups and one thing led to another and my whole social media started converting into this other life that I was living. And because I was in Toastmasters and because I was in this leadership group, I was also learning from other individuals that been where I've been at and are doing what they're doing now. But I started learning a lot more things that I could use for myself. So when we're in, just to clear this out, when we're used to our own little groups that we grew up with, it's kind of gutter water because it's it's the same water that you've been sipping and that water that i'm talking about is an analogy for knowledge right it's the same wisdom it's the same slogans it's the same analogies in that group right in that cultural group when you jump out of it and you start seeing life in a different way like oh Instead of saying, I spend money, I should say, I circulate money because it always comes back. Oh, I failed at this, but it's not really failure. I just learned how to do it a better way. Just shifting those little mind clicks, right, is what helped me start believing in myself. On top of that, the little accomplishments that I started doing, like showing up every Wednesday at 6 p.m. to the Toastmasters, <laughs> ready to go with you know my speech and standing in front of people are you gonna stop talking do you want to talk 
verse. And just standing in front of these individuals that I didn't know and having to learn how to speak and not say um or uh, being that English is my second language and I still to this day mispronounce words, it was a stepping stone for me. I would get made fun of because of how I switch around the sentence or how I mispronounce a word. And that really hurts your confidence when you speak because you don't, I didn't know that I was messing up that word or that sentence until everyone would bust out laughing. And my intention wasn't to make them laugh. So when they were, when they were laughing at what I was saying, that hurt my confidence to even speak up and say anything because I didn't know if I was formulating the sentence correctly. Now that I've been through Toastmasters, and that was years ago, and that I'm older, if a person laughs at my sentence, I just ask, what did I say incorrectly? And they would tell me, and in this demeanor, I would say, okay, well, now I know how to say that. And show them, hey, it's not funny. So I say all of this to say, you sometimes have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations that allow you to grow to start believing in yourself. Because if you stay where you are with the same group of people doing the same thing, you're always going to have that self-doubt. Same thing happened when I started losing weight. I didn't have a trainer. I didn't know proper form. What I started doing was following accounts and I keep going to following accounts because you're lit literally feeding your mind day in, day out, the content that you're putting through these eyes. And what you give attention to is what your life turns into. So I would follow genuine women with no exaggerated body parts that weren't theirs before just genuine women working out that lost weight and shared it on their social media. And from their tips and their tricks, I started organizing my schedule into working out. So I started with three days and I went to five days and I got hooked and I started doing six days, incorporating like stretching, yoga and stuff like that. And I started losing weight. Well, guess what? When I started seeing how I was losing weight based on the little changes I was doing, like not eating out as much or not eating as much candy and buying all of these junk foods. I eliminated everything that was just not useful for me or, or for my body. And I started seeing these gradual changes. You know how much belief that started like instilling in me? Like, wow, I was able to do this without like having to pay a trainer or having to pay a nutritionist. I just followed these tips and look at me now, like I lost my 30 pounds. I was very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. Working out at the park and someone would walk by with their dog or something. I, as a human, you think they're looking at you, you think they're judging you, but I kept going, right? I was showing up for myself and that's what I want you to do. Take note of this, where in your life can you show up for yourself a little better? Could it be in your health? Could it be in your thoughts, your mind? Could it be in your relationships? Are you ne neglecting some people in your life that you could be pouring into? Could it be your finances? What areas in life are you neglecting and not giving attention to that would actually start helping you. And I want you to make that list and be very vulnerable with yourself because I'm not gonna look at that list. I hope no one else looks at that list, but write it with pen and paper, not in your note section on your phone, like everyone says, but there's a power of writing things down with your pen onto a paper. So if you have to go to the Dollar Tree or you have to go somewhere to get a journal, <laughs> um, I laugh because I preach about having a journal so much because guys, it helps. But get yourself a journal, put your right hand on it and 
anoint it, you know, just cleanse it. Let's state this is my journal of growth. This is the year of growth. And I replant, repellent, whatever the word is, any negativity. <laughs> Pero Dios mío. Stop it. Who are you barking at? Who are you barking at? You replenish any evil, any stagnant energy, any negativity that you might embrace yourself in that day or try to come over you that day. No, 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 no. This journal is for growth, self-growth, whatever growth you want it to be. And really start being vulnerable with yourself and writing down those areas that you could work on because the moment you start taking action into the things that you know you need to work on, you are training your mind to say, we've had enough, now it's time to take action. And you know what kills all fear? Action does. When you have fear in something, let that be going into a new business, going into a new job and quitting your old one where you've been there for six years and going into a whole new career that you don't even know how it's gonna end up. Let that be getting rid of your old fashion into a new fashion. Whatever it is that makes you feel uncomfortable, action kills that fear. And with them taking that action, you'll start to figure out on how to piece together the puzzles. On how to, okay, I don't know how to, I don't know how to create a business but I, I truly want a business that yields millions of dollars every year. Where do I start? At first it's daunting, it's like a big project, right? That you're trying to figure out. Or I really wanna start my YouTube channel, or I really wanna start a podcast, or I just wanna quit this job and go into real estate. Where do I start? Google it. Do you know how many answers I have found on Google? Like, I'm not here to be your goal. I'm here to be your guidance. Like, get your head out of your ass and go to Google. And type in how to X, Y, Z. And it'll give you a list. Now, here's what I don't want you to do. Do not compare your journey to Susie Q or John Doe. That is not your journey. Your journey is different. As a single mom, I would compare myself to singles as if I had all the time in the world and with two kids and no, that wasn't true. I didn't have all the time in the world like a single person would. I had two children to take care of and I went to work, they went to school, they had homework, we all had to eat, I had to cook for all of us. So my journey looked very different. My scheduling looked very different. My time management skills looked very different. If I wanted to lose weight, it wasn't when I wanted to wake up and it bestowed on me to go work out. I had to schedule it. That's why I'm so big on planners. Because if you don't schedule it, if you don't see it the night before, you're going to forget. We are creatures of habits. And if our habit is literally to wake up rush out the door, go to work. We're gonna do that day in, day out. When we start actually focusing on what it is we wanna do, and we pay attention to it the night before, and we execute it the day of, that's how you start moving that little, I don't know what you wanna call this. <laughs> you start moving the needle. You start moving the needle towards what it is you wanna do. So when you start doing that, that's how you start building belief in yourself. Lastly, I wanna leave you on this. Any promise that you break to yourself or to anyone, your body takes note of it. Your subconscious, your mind takes note of it. And it gives you a, it start, it's, I'm stuttering now. It starts to not believe you. Be careful what you say you're going to do and you don't do it because your mind will start looking at you like a foe. You need to build that trust with yourself 
by keeping the promises that you tell yourself you're going to do. If you know that you are not going to work out five days this week, do not tell your mind that. Because your mind will be like, no, she won't. That's what she said last month. And guess what? It'll self-sabotage you because what the mind is trying to do is save its energy. So if you're over here trying to make these dramatic, drastic goals and changes, you're going to be left empty handed. And again, you will feel like you can't believe in yourself and that you're not enough. But if you're crushing it with mini goals, those mini goals start stacking up into like this beautiful wall of strength <laughs> okay that analogy beautiful wall of strength and your mind will say hey every time she says something she gonna do it so even if that means starting off with the smallest thing just so you can show your mind you can keep your promise and you do what you say you are going to do same thing with waking up in the morning i'm gonna be a morning person if you haven't been a morning person what makes you think you're gonna wake up three hours before you normally do start 15 minutes before it's like um, where we see like 1% better. That's what they're talking about. To become 1% better, it's not the macro changes that you're doing. It's not you wake up tomorrow three hours ahead of time that you normally do for the first time. And you drink your green smoothie that you just made that first time. And you drink your water that you drink for the first time in the morning. And you do your gratefuls and you do this and you do that. By the third day, you're going to be exhausted. And guess what? You're going to have to start all over again. So those macro changes that you were trying to make in the beginning didn't help <laughs> because now you have to start over with micro ones. So start with your micro ones. Instill belief in yourself every time you cross off something on that planner that you said you were going to do for yourself. And that's how I started believing in myself. I stopped being fearful of these changes because I was already getting myself used to small little changes that I was winning at. So you have to, going back to the beginning of the video, be vulnerable with yourself on what are the things that you need to start fixing. Do many small changes in those things and start celebrating those wins. Because by celebrating, by doing, by being vulnerable but with yourself and acknowledging where you need help, you're going to start believing in yourself and taking risk. And you're going to start feeling like you are enough because of all of the little changes that you've been making just so you can live the life that you've always imagined. And I don't care if it's for being a, be a better mom or being a better spouse or being an entrepreneur, whatever the end goal is, of your journey, you need to always have that self-belief because if you try to find it in others and you do not make yourself strong enough to make yourself feel like you believe in yourself and that you are enough, then you're always chasing someone else's opinions. So I hope that helped ladies because that's really what helped me when it came to instilling self-belief and knowing that I am enough because then you're unstoppable. You truly are. You'll start becoming this goal-making machine where goals are fun to you, where change is fun to you, where you feel like, hey, I was able to do this. Let's see what else I'm able to do. And that's where I want you guys to get at. So comment below on what it is that you are ready to change and what it is that you're going to start doing and what it is you're going to start promising yourself and keeping that promise to yourself. I would love to know. And guys, fall season is here. I feel it. I feel the fall. I feel <laughs> the leaves. No, I don't. I'm in Las Vegas. It's still hot out here, but in my house, it's cold. And I have like this cute little, you know, skull head thing that makes me feel like Halloween is around the corner. My house hasn't been set up for fall, but it will, okay? It's gonna smell like spice in here very soon. But I hope you guys have a good rest of your week. If you're not subscribed yet, 
go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you really found this video helpful, go ahead and like, go ahead and click on the like button and share the video. It helps the algorithm. It helps get this video out there for others who is also looking to get out of their own way and start believing in themselves and being enough. You know this channel is all about motivating and, and going after your dreams and really making the life that you always wanted into a reality. So share it. It's going to not only help me, but help others too. So have a good one, guys. See you later.